Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Lunch and Paint with Blue Cat Studio. This is Wendy Clinky, and I wanted to do um, a little, actually it's two things. First, we're going to kind of do a cute spring gnome, and then the second part is we are going to talk a little bit about color scheme, and we're going to kind of work those together. So this right here, it was me playing with a color palette and I was just really fixated on using like this kind of minty green and this purple, but very mushy and very cold. So I decided to kind of call it quits. And then I started playing with some muted colors with a rainbow and then that kind of didn't work either. So we finally eventually ended up kind of with something more like this. So this is pretty much what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and get started. So with your palette, the colors you're gonna wanna have on hand are like a nice bright yellow, like daffodil yellow, ultramarine blue. Now these are not new colors to us, right? These are colors that we use all the time. Um, dragon fruit, you could also use pink peony. Some just kind of like a, a bright, a pink that's that's got some intensity to it and brightness. This is mistletoe green. I really like it. Um, honestly, I think Craft Smart makes better intense greens, but oftentimes deco art's just easier to go with. So mistletoe or um, uh, the other one, festive green, doesn't really matter. And oh, Tuscan red. I meant to grab a true red. Well, whatever. Some kind of a nice bright red is going to be a good idea. And then of course, white, maybe some black. And we'll begin by just kind of getting this guy in. So you can see like on my board here, he's a little, he's a little funky looking, right? Um, we've got some, uh, we've got some sketching, some re-sketching. Originally I had him taller and then I decided I want him shorter with a little bit more emphasis on, on the, um, on the hat. So I just came back in over it with some white paint and, and fixed it up. So we'll begin actually with his nose. So go ahead and grab your pink. Dragon fruit's great. If you have, I mean, whatever you happen to have, we're going to mix, right? Because sometimes, ooh, well, let's shake it up. Shake, 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 shake. I just got a whole bunch of goop there. Sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do a little bit of the dragon fruit. Again, whatever pink you happen to have is fine, um, if as long as it's kind of an intense one. We're going to need white. We're going to need a lot of white. White is going to be our big mixer today. We could actually pull out, you know, bottles of color for every single one of these, but I don't want to force you to buy every color in the rainbow, unless that's what you want to do. Then you have a storage problem. Okay. So to get his nose, we're going to take one part pink. And again, when you're mixing, always take from each of these pots and mix somewhere else. We're going to grab some yellow to kind of peach that up or orange it up. And then a solid chunk of white. So it's probably... I say one part yellow, two parts pink, because that needs to pink up a little bit, and maybe three or four parts white. That's a nice kind of peachy tone. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I usually mix my skin tones. Now, if you'd like to um, go with something other than Caucasian, you could either grab some brown to deepen this, or even like a deep, like di dioxazine purple. I love purple for toning my colors. Right. I know it seems weird to add purple, but it may give you a more natural, less yellowy thing. But anyways, all right. So let's get his nose done. And I'm going to give him kind of a large, nice large nose. I feel like the nose oftentimes when I'm doing a gnome is it's kind of like the central piece. I don't know. You can just ignore the black lines there. We kind of messed that up. And let me see. So the comments are showing here. Anyways, if you're if you're watching, please say hi. I love seeing you there. I love chatting with you when we do this live. Um, so it makes it more fun. All right, and then we'll get his hand with the same color. And again, it's kind of just kind of like a little, just a little like blob with a couple of lumps to make to make um, to make knuckles. Now here's a question: um, How many of you would actually like to know how to draw this? Do you want to you want to see that really quick? If I pause, is that going to be annoying or is that going to be helpful? Oh, hey there, Shelly. Good to see you. I'm glad you caught me. All right, let's quickly. You know what? Let's grab a color you can actually see. So when I'm doing when I'm doing a gnome, I generally start with a circle. There's his nose, right? Then I say, okay, if I want him to be short and I want his hat to be tall. I kind of draw some some endpoints. I'm gonna do this with a nice black marker so you can see. There we go. So nose, there's his base, and then here's his his thing. 
So then I say, all right, then we need a beard, which is just going to kind of come out almost like an almond shape or two kind of slightly cockeyed parentheses. Then we know we need some feet, which are just going to be some upside down U's. Then we can kind of connect it maybe from his shoulders here from the side of the beard and you can connect there or you can not connect there. It doesn't matter. And then we can say, all right, then the hat comes maybe here and here on either side of his beard. And we're just going to kind of create wiggly waggly lines, straight ish, but not perfect that go up like so. And there's your gnome. Now you could also do one, two, three or four to make a hand. And then, you know, you're just going to have some things that kind of come up and some circles, however you like. And those can be balloons. Those can be flowers. But that's how you draw this guy, right? Not terribly difficult. I hope that was helpful in terms of learning how to sketch a gnome all for yourself. And now we can get back to painting. And you can alter the proportions if you want them to be more body, less hat. You can do that. If you've got a really long board, then you could give them more body. I personally, you know, I've got these like cute ceramic, um, these cute ceramic gnomes that are from Denmark. Um, that I've had for a few years and they're really like this big. And they're almost all hat. And I just love the proportion of that. So these are kind of inspired by that. They're, the ones I have are technically Christmas decorations, but they're really cute. Okay. So I'm just doing a little second set of second layer. There we go of paint because some of that wood is showing through. So again, one of the things about, you know, painting on wood is you tend to get a lot of, um, it gets very absorbent. I'm using the back of an old canvas here to just offload some of that paint before I go through and rinse. Break out the old Tostitos, you know, jar with water. Now, if you wonder why the heck do I put a lid on my my rinse water, it's because I have an extra curious cat who loves to get into things and he loves to dump my rinse water out. So, not a fan of that. Okay, so now that I've like stepped away from my from my design, what are we doing next? All right, let's. Now that we've gotten that, let's do his hat. So we're gonna grab the ultramarine blue. I'm just gonna squeeze some out, maybe here. Okay. So we got the ultramarine blue and I'm probably going to need more than that. Um, I'm using a fairly small brush. I probably could use larger, but we sort of determined that it goes kind of out and around the nose like this and like so. And this, this wood is going to suck up a lot of the moisture from this paint. So I am probably going to need a couple of coats or to just be very patient and keep adding paint on. Luckily, the folk art actually has really amazing coverage, especially compared to some of the other brands out there. So this is the Ultramarine Blue from Folk Art. The other brands of Ultramarine are nice, but I really like this one, especially, you know, when you're looking at like craft paint versus high-end paint. And I'm not going to use high-end paint on a piece of scrap wood here that's yunk. This is often the case, right? Okay, so here we go. We are just... Painting and painting. Again, you could go with a larger brush if you wanted. I'm going to come up to the top here and just start to bring some of the paint down, get my edges. Pull up my sleeves. I feel like I'm about to be painting my sleeves here. Again, I had a few regrets about my initial sketch, which I did a few days ago. So, you know. I'm, I'm tweaking and you're totally allowed to do that. You know, you can trace a thing or sketch your design and then be like, you know, I need to make a few modifications. That is a okay. And so I tell you, you know, for some reason, I really struggled with a color scheme for this guy. I have my design in mind. In fact, I think I've had, I was going through a bunch of old sketches and found, found something very similar to this in my sketchbook from like last year, but I'd never really filled out the colors. It was just, you know, sort of still in, you know, it was like a sketch that was like this big. And sometimes, you know, applying the color, that can be really difficult. And so oftentimes, like, you know, I showed you guys this whole palette of like, what do I have? What colors are appealing to me? Like I'm loving on these colors, but I personally couldn't make them work. I even broke out my whole color wheel and was like, well, you know, you know, maybe I can make some decisions based on this, but it wasn't working. So I finally said, all right, so I'm grabbing some white not even rinsing. And I'm just going to kind of work it into this edge of his hat. Just going to kind of blend right there on top. 
just get that kind of light blue. But, it, you know, it was really nice to mess up and not get my colors quite right. You know, on my scratch paper, on my on my um, color swatch paper, rather than live with you guys while attempting to paint a thing. And you know what I'm saying? So sometimes, you know, it's a great idea to just sit down and make, make a swatch plate. And it doesn't have to be anything formal. I know I've seen some folks, you know, you've got these cool like squares and these templates, but the way I see it, just play with color. All right, so I'm just kind of blending between the blues and the whites to kind of get, to kind of have the lightest portion over here on the left and a little bit darker over here on the right. So now I've got a lot of blue left on my brush. I'm gonna use it to just kind of fill out his shoes to add some darkness. His shoes won't necessarily be blue. I think I made them an amorphous mushy brown but the blue will at least give us the darkness that we're looking for for those guys. So again, kind of a flat on the bottom of the shoes because bottoms of shoes are flat, unless you have hokas. Whoop. Is that on camera? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Pink, pink. Okay. Yep. So now we've got the darkness. So that's another thing that I was playing with. I had all these like light pastel colors and it was also looking mushy because I didn't have any any darks or the dark colors that I had readily available didn't work up with my pastels. And again, it was great to just mess around with that while while drawing teeny tiny squares on a piece of you know copier paper rather than on my on my end result here. So now that I'm wiping this off, I'm going to give it a quick blast because I don't want to pick up any of that blue in any of the other colors we're using. Again, because we're on wood, it's going to dry really fast because that wood is thirsty. Okay, okay. That's about all the blasting I needed, which is nice. I'm going to step up my brush. This guy is real small. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. And this guy isn't a hugely, huge difference, but you notice it is almost twice the size. So that's gonna mean pretty much twice the speed of painting. So I'm gonna grab a, actually look at this. I had a little bit of blue smudge right in there in the white. I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna give him a pale blue beard. It's blue beard, the gnome. Well, maybe. It's just that I don't ever really like to put a straight, you know, stark white down. Always like it to be slightly off. So this one is tinged a light blue. That also gives me the opportunity to add highlights and shadows and just, you know, do a little something with a beard. So there's our first coat. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It might be a little wonky, but hey, he's he's a goofy gnome. So chances are, you know, his, his beard's maybe not growing evenly or maybe he didn't trim it. So we're good, right? We can use our imagination, some artistic license, all the things. And I'll give that a quick blast. And again, because it's wood, it's going to need a couple coats. Because I can really see the wood coming through, but it's sort of a weird brownish tint, which is maybe not exactly what we wanted. So grabbing more white and just kind of pulling it into that little bit of blue that's there. Maybe I'm going to kiss more blue. Just kind of, again, more coating here. One, two, there we go. Just a little bit more differentiation to his, his little hand there. We want it to, I lost some of my, my knuckle bumps. Yep, yeah, that's an official term, right? Knuckle bumps. Okay, cool. So now he's got that pale blue. It really looks like white for the most part, but it is technically a light blue. So now we've got his beard kind of plotted in. Give it another blast. And I'm not even going to bother rinsing because now I want to get the background done and then we'll come in and add his. No, actually, it would make more sense to do his body, wouldn't it? Let's do his body first, then his background. So offload a little excess paint. So I'm just trying to wipe a lot of the extra white off here. Um, it, it's just hard to rinse everything off your brush. So I have a back of an old canvas board. And, you know, sometimes it's funny when you offload all that paint, it ends up becoming art in its own weird way, especially when you do it 
sort of strategically. So for his outfit, I will kind of go for like an orangey red. So apparently I grabbed the Tuscan red instead of like the tomato or the true red. I guess I didn't read the, read the label. So we're going to make it happen with the Tuscan red. So we'll take one part Tuscan red, one part yellow. And this is the daffodil yellow from folk art. Maybe another little, little bit more red, yellow in there. And that gives us a nice orangey, orangey red. And we'll just kind of come in and give his outfit a coating. It's a little mushy for me. I'll probably bring a little bit more red in in some parts and a little bit more yellow in in some parts. But we want to get our first base coat in. And again, it's almost just like coloring inside the lines. I have a small brush. I have a little section right here that I want to get the paint in, but I'm just no way I'm going to. Well, look, I had coffee today. I don't usually have coffee, but I had coffee today. So I'm a little bit more jittery than normal. I don't think I can manage a, a big brush getting in that tight little spot without making a mess. I can feel my hands like, Arr. anybody else ever get like that? Like I used to be like a crazy insane, like I drink coffee all the time. I can't live without it. And then I tried to, you know, quit milk. And so I ended up quitting coffee because I don't like not milk in my coffee. All right, so now just coming back in and adding a little bit more of that orange in a few spots just to get that thicker coating. And I have so much orange like all up on the bristles of this brush that I'm just going to dab it in. So now we have a nice kind of almost like a brick red, orangey brick red something here going on. It's a pretty color. I'm not 100% satisfied with it, but I'm going to offload this brush and step back to my small brush for a minute just so I can get some details. Well, my medium guy, small, small flat. That's what I'm trying to say. Oof. So this guy, right? Not the biggest, not the smallest. So I'm gonna grab just some straight red from my palette. I'm gonna bring the red in kind of along the bottom portion and allow it to kind of blend into that orange. And a little bit here and kind of blend into orange. There we go. I tell you, the way his hand is held, I want to just put like a little cell phone in his hand. I guess it could be like selfie gnome. Somehow I think I like think I'm clever or something with a whole like, let's just put cell phones in all these guys' hands and give them have them do selfies. But I feel like that's like the way the world goes now. It's all about selfies. So I've always hated selfies, but now I've found, you know, sometimes just so that y'all can see my face, I have to do some selfies. That way, you know, I'm like a real person, although I'm pretty sure I, I mess up enough. You guys kind of got that part straight that I'm a real person. All right, so now I'm just going to, no rinse, just grab some yellow and kind of blend a little bit more of that yellowy, yellowy tone up here. And again, I'm just trying to, trying to get a little bit, a little bit more interest going on. I, I, I want to feel orange, but I also want to kind of feel the range of orange to reds. And so by doing the, you know, wet paint and wet paint, I get a good blend. And it's a little awkward right there. So I'm going to try and just blendy blend a little bit more. I don't want any of my edges to be too harsh or defined. There we go. And it's a little bit harsh defined right in here. Yeah, sort of losing it. A little bit more yellow, a little bit more yellow, just to pull a little bit in here. Uh, okay, there we go. That's, there we go. Fingers to the rescue at all times. When it doesn't work, just use your fingers. Okay, offloading the red from my brush and the yellow and the gunge, getting it, you know, trying to drag it up from the edges of the, of the bristles as well and rinsing. So now he's kind of coming together. We've got our orange and blue gnome. And with this, we're going to stick around with this. Whoops, I need to dry him off a little bit more. But this smallish flat guy, same brush we were using. We're going to fill in the bubbles, the balloons, things real quick. And I just have a handful of circles. 
So I'm going to go for that, that pink, the dragon fruit. So I'll do one that's just the bright pink here. Do another one where I grab some white and just kind of do a pink white combo. So it's maybe it's a little bit lighter. Maybe put that one here. Maybe another one. Okay, so this is right over the top of a knot. Let's see, I have to like jam the paint in there. I'm gonna just jam whatever paint I can get my hands on in there. It's gonna be imperfect because it's a knot. But we're kind of working with you know the natural features of the wood. And chances are, if I hold on to this piece long enough, that knot is going to actually bleed sap through and it's going to turn kind of funky colors. And that's just the nature of wood, especially when you don't prime it. So now grabbing a little bit more white, we'll kind of come in here and have like a light pink, just kind of blending right there on, on your surface. And we'll probably come in and tweak these colors a little bit as we go. Uh, especially with given the nature of the background colors we're using, these may be too too similar in terms of value that we'll need to, to tune them. But at least just kind of getting that color in place is going to be nice. So now we've sort of reserved the spots for those flowers. We know where they're going to be. We're going to come in with some background shortly. And I'm going to add a little bit more light to that. There we go. So this guy's a mess over the knot, but it's fine. And this is going to be a real pain to cover too. But who cares, right? We're having fun. And that is kind of the key point here. So offload, rinse. Of course, dry your brush, get all the junk out. And then we're going to get that background. So as much as I want to use like my big brush here, I think it's going to make me crazy. So the ideal color that I want to use for the background is this um, Palmetto from Ceram Coat. But asking you to buy a whole bunch of brands, not my favorite. So we're going to mix it and I'm going to grab the mistletoe. You could just as easily use a festive green. I don't know where my model festive green is. I think my kid walked off with it. Or bright green. I mean, any of these greens will do. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one. So I'm going to go with the mistletoe. Yeah, I did grab the mistletoe. Okay. So we're going to take a little bit of that right here, a little bit of yellow, because we do want this to be a yellowy green. Okay, well, that's about right. And then I'm going to take a huge old hunk and hunk of white and see if I can take that way, way down. So this is still very bright. It needs a lot more white. Uh-oh, here comes a cat. He wants to say hi. Hello, Nugget. Hi, buddy. You painting with Mama today? All right, so we've mixed that up. I think that's pretty close. Let's see how I do with my mixing. If I take the ceram coat, pour a little bit of that out. It's close. Theirs is a little bit yellower, so I could even grab just another kiss of yellow and kind of work that in. Ugh, look at that. I didn't get a solid rinse on this, so the, the, red, is, the red is coming through. That's fine, though. It'll just warm this up a little. Okay. So that's pretty close to that. It's not perfect, but it is close enough. And we're gonna just kind of fill in sort of the mid zone here. I'm gonna come most of the way up, but not all the way, because we're gonna do a yellow blend down. And that's gonna give us that feeling of it being like a sunny day without us having to actually paint like a, a, a sunshine like we're in kindergarten or something. So I hope that that kind of how to mix that color made sense. It gets one part green, two parts yellow, two to three parts yellow, and then like basically five parts white. And we'll bring that down, just kind of get around this guy. And we really want to go for nice and light. That way it's not an overwhelming green. So one of the things I'm always thinking about, and I know I talk about this a lot, and I'm going to keep talking about it because it is one of the number one things I see folks struggle with um, when they're new to art um, or when they've got a lot of the basic, you know, execution techniques down, but the composition they still struggle, values, lights and darks. And so often we forget to either tone down or amp up our colors and we end up with everything somewhere in the middle. So I'm rotating this, everything's still on camera? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I know I keep asking, hey, is everything still on camera? But you know, the other day I was like grabbing a time lapse and I would say that like 60 to 70% of the action occurred off camera. And I was like, really? 
I felt I felt a little I felt a little ridiculous. All right, so that batch of paint I mixed up is lasting pretty well. It's a great base coat. I'm probably gonna have to mix up some more. Or I can just grab some of that stuff that I poured, which I'll probably do. Yeah, there we go. We'll just grab some of the ceram coat. Although it doesn't actually coat as well as the stuff I mixed up. That's funny. Like if deco art actually had a, a pale celery like this, or if I had ever seen, let's see. So there's my yellow, my one part to two parts yellow to green. Big old hunk of white. Yep, even more hunk of white. I think if, if deco art actually had a green like this, or if, or if I actually saw one on the shelf every time I went shopping, I would buy it and I would tell you what that color is. But I have, there are certain colors that deco art just, in my opinion, doesn't really do very well. One of them is greens, the other one is pinks. All right, there we go. But everybody has their strengths. I can say the same about almost every single brand of paint. You know, these guys do this well, they don't do that well, which is why we play the field. It's nice to be loyal, but only if the quality is there. Oh, I'm chatting way on and on and on. Hey, Linda, you almost missed us. Aw, I'm so glad you caught me. And of course, you know, replay is always, always available. There we go. Cha cha. All right. So I'm feeling it's like more yellowy green on this side than this side, but it's okay because we're going to do that whole blend coming down anyway. So it doesn't really matter. And I've got a little thicker coating on this side, so I can just come back and add some of that to the other side. So again, this is just a random two by four I found. I almost threw it away and I was like, oh, wait, hold on a minute. I can do it. I can do a thing on it. Let's do that. Whoops. Sorry, now it's kind of coming off cam for some of you. So guys, I do have multiple cameras going. So if you're like, what's she talking about? It's still on camera. It's probably the other guys. All right. So just getting that green. Okay, so we got a good green base. Not going to be perfect down at the bottom because we're going to come in with some of that darker green. So let me just re kind of invigorate some of this section here. So it's not quite so see-through. Got some very rough material right here. So it's going to be very hard to get a really clean edge. So I'm not going to stress about it right now. I can always come back. In fact, I'm going to add some of this green this pale green just up here, just to kind of get a coating. So even though, you know, we're, we're going to do a blend, it's still going to be kind of based in yellowy green. So I'm going to get a base coat on because that's going to make that it a lot easier for that yellow to show up. So just filling it in. And again, these guys are all lumpy looking. We're going to come back over them and fix them up. So don't worry about it. But it's just nice to kind of use them as place markers so we remember where our little balloon flower, I don't want to call them dingle dangle things because they're not dangling, but those thingies attached to the other thingies. It's going to be coming up from there. Oh, so Linda says she's got a pile of two by fours. Yeah, so you've already got the stuff. Oh, hey there, Marsha. She is in Lacombe, Canada. I hope I pronounced that right. The other day we did a thing, you know. You know, tell us the name of a place and the one that, you know, people are going to mispronounce. Uh oh, I got to sneeze. So I'm going to say bless you and I won't. <laughs> oh, all right. It happened. Okay. So I, I discovered because of that post, like how many names I totally, totally butcher the you know what out of. So, yeah, you got random two by fours. And, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, am I doing y'all a favor or a disservice? Well, like, oh, yeah, just grab a two by four. Because then, I don't know about you, but me, I'll be walking past a junk pile, see some random two by fours and be like, oh, I got to take those home with me. I could do a thing with it. But maybe that's already our net. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> she says, bless you. Oh, and so did Shelly. Thank you. But sometimes, I, sometimes I'm like, if I just give you free reign to be to be a clutter bug like me, or do we do it anyway? So now you actually have a way of using it up. I haven't decided which it is. Either way, I think we're good. All right. So 
eh, you know, there's just no way to get this like guy squeezed on all screens at all times, but it's fine. All right, so for some reason, I cannot get the paint out of the ferrule on this guy. I'll give him a good squeeze, but he's kind of coming together. I probably didn't need to rinse it fully, but I was getting out of control. So now I'm going to grab this bright yellow. I'm going to avoid the orange part that I just touched. And I'm just going to put it right here in, into where we were mixing our green and add a bunch of white. So now I've got a nice bright yellow. And you can see that yellow next to the green, it, it works, right? They kind of... They blend together nicely. So we're going to take that yellow right up here from the top and we're just going to kind of blend it down into that green. It's going to be a little bit more complicated as we get on the other side with the, with the flowers and stuff. But you kind of want it to feel almost like the sun is just kind of shining in and yeah, like it's just a warm sunny day. Unlike here in Virginia, where at least this morning it was 29 degrees. And my kids still go out just in their hoodies. What the heck? Teenagers, what can I say? Maybe there's like an, all these great memes recently, like about teenagers and hoodies. And I think I would have laughed at them last year. But this year, it's like, it's the year of the hoodie. I'm like, well, okay. I understand now. And then to make matters worse, of course, I got myself a hoodie. And that's like all I want to live in is a hoodie. I'm like, please don't make me go into the office unless I'm allowed to wear my hoodie. <laughs> but today's a school day and this is my lunch break. It's my last quarter of school. Then we're going to have to change things up. I'm not going to get to do our luncheon paints on Thursday. We'll have to rejigger the schedule so it works. Okay. So do you see how we've kind of got the yellow up top and it just kind of melds into that sort of pale green? actually blended pretty well without too much help. I might grab a little bit more of that lighter, lighter green and kind of bring some of it back up into the yellow just to keep the yellow from completely taking over. But I have this thing where like whenever I'm doing art, I almost like, it's like almost a compulsive thing. Like I just want, I just want the entire rainbow represented. That's so probably why I'll never be able to like fully carry off just a pastel painting. Because I'll be like, well, where's my rainbow? I need something intense. Anybody else weird like that? I feel weird. Okay. So I don't think I need to rinse my brush. Let's see if we squeeze this on camera again. I'm going to just take that green, yellow color, kind of do it down here at the base. So offload my brush there because then, guess what? I'm going to grab some of this mistletoe green or festive green or bright green whatever you happen to have that's kind of somewhere in the middle and we like it mushy I don't want it just plain green kind of want to blend it on in there just a little bit and you can make it a straight line you can make it kind of like a hill maybe grab some yellow I got a little bit of yellow left blend some yellow in I want it to be I want it to feel warm and, you know, kind of a mishmash of color is good. Linda says, I'm sitting here in a hoodie right now. It's cool here in Texas. Cool being what, like 50 degrees, 70 degrees? <laughs> I'm teasing you, but. Oh. oh, okay. Sorry. I should explain what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing some white and I'm kind of blending a little down here at the base. Cat, what are you doing? All right. Just to lighten it up. So why am I doing a little light at the base? It kind of just, again, adds blend. It kind of makes this happen, makes makes this more interesting, less, you know, flat. It's always fun when you can kind of keep things from being totally flat. So I'm gonna offload. I've got a lot of paint on my brush. I just wanna kind of brush some of it off. Maybe grab a little bit more of that darker green and sorry, I gotta rotate again. And just kind of edge along the top here and then just kind of pull some of it down. Doesn't have to be a perfect blend. Ugh. You know, the problem with these long pieces is it's so hard to get everything, everything to show. So we've got the darker green and it's kind of a blendy, whatever. And notice it's not parallel. It's slightly like a little bit of a hill. I might need to fix his shoes though, because his shoes look all, all uneven there. Like this one's not even on the ground. So I got to bring the ground up to meet his feet. Okay. Hopefully y'all can't see that, but I can see that. It's going to make me crazy. All right, there we go. 
So I do have him on a little bit of a slant of a hill. And that was actually on purpose for once. Although when I try and make it a hill, it ends up looking like straight. But when I try and make it straight, it's always wonky. Can't win. And it's okay. Imperfection works. So let's go ahead and rinse that brush. It's kind of long, you know, kind of cute, bright, springy, happy colors. We like happy colors. Shelly says we had minus 20 degrees yesterday morning. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a reason that I lived below the Mason Dixon line. It's a little warmer, a little warmer down here. <laughs> you totally win, Shelly. Like, above and beyond. Woo. Okay. So let's grab a small brush. I have one of my mermaid skinny brushes. I'm going to grab a little bit of weight. And I'm going to do like a line across the top of his nose just to kind of give him a little, little shine. Uh, maybe a little shine kind of on his, the top of his hand, sort of right, right along there. We might, we might tune that a little. In fact, we'll see. But let's make these flowery things happen. I'm going to rinse that, rinse that off again. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more green. And I think this green is almost too light for what I wanna do. So I'm gonna use this big guy here to kind of mix. I'm gonna grab, it's now very chunky, ultramarine. So one part that to two parts mistletoe green. I'm gonna mix us a darker green. Again, we could totally just grab something out of the drawer. If you have a Hauser dark green, you could get away with that. Um, oh my God. He's such a goof. Um, but I figure, you know, the more the more colors I make you do, the more complicated this gets. So we're just going to mix. So I would say one part of the ultramarine blue to two parts of the green. And we're just going to kind of start drawing some, actually a little water is going to help too. A little water. There we go. Otherwise, otherwise I'm going to be going crazy with these lines and having trouble getting them. All right, so I don't know if you saw, I managed to pull that line off in one fell swoop. The only reason I could pull that off is because I watered it down. If it was pure paint and it's just normal self, I, my line would have died right about an inch in. So do it again. And Linda says, ooh, that's cold. A cool 49 in Texas. See, I'm laughing at you because I'm like, what, 50 degrees? Okay, I was off by like one degree. Ah, oh, Texas, you lucky ducky. All right, I'm bringing this one down. Oops. All right, so that one was less successful, but it's fine. We just kind of want, we just kind of want little things that kind of attach here. So bring this guy here. And I might just kind of, some of these, I, you know, if I have too many sticks coming down, it could get really busy. So we might kind of, you know, just have some hints. You don't have to continue that line the entire way. You just need it to be mostly believable which in this case might be kind of like, whoops, got like a little, a little crack in the wood right there. Can't see because it's hidden by the paint. And then this guy kind of comes down and see it just sort of peters off in that zone, but we can still kind of pull it off. And oh, I almost dropped my, pen, my brush again and we'll have it come out that way. Okay, so now we've kind of got these balloony thingies. You know what I really wanted to do? But still, I'm like, I'm like all like wrapped around the axle about glue, but I have some really cute buttons. I just want to like stick buttons on this and then like make like, you know, flowers around the buttons. Let me see if I have one so I can show you guys what I mean. I don't know where they are. Where are they? Come on, buttons. Uh, I seem to have misplaced my, my buttons, but I was thinking like pinks and yellows and oranges and reds, like all in this zone. And then you just draw flowers. And then I found like these cool printed ones on Amazon. But again, we're trying to, we're trying to keep it, we're trying to keep it simple here. So let's go ahead and add some detail to these things. So I've got pinks right now. I do want to get a little bit of red in there. So I'm just going to come in and grab that straight, just Tuscan red. And I think this one is wonky. Well, let's do a little something to this guy up top here first. Can we, can we all see that? Yeah, we can. Okay. So I'll maybe just do a circle around that pink. And notice it's kind of funky on the inside. I don't really care, right? We're just going to kind of add some, 
some flowers. And again, here's where we're just getting kind of cute, whimsical, having fun with it, not overly worried about perfection. Just having fun. And I guess after I paint this, if I if I can find my buttons and I'm really feeling it, because I could just get some like E6000 or something and you know, glue some buttons on for fun. They're probably somewhere like hanging out with my resin kit. I don't know. Which reminds me, you guys, February 4th, that's a Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm doing a FREE -E resin and glass workshop. Um, I'm going to be hosting it inside both my uh, premium membership, the Blue Cat Inner Circle, as well as the free Let's Paint um, painting group. So I hope you guys can make it. Um, if you are interested and you're not yet in the Let's Paint group, um, join or let me know that you need that you need help finding out, figuring out where it is so that you can jump in. I'll get you the link and then you just show up and I've got a supply list all posted and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun, you know, and if you've done resin before, you know, I don't know that you'll really see much super new, but it is a fun project that we're doing. But if you're new to resin, it's a pretty, it's a pretty manageable, straightforward, you know, achievable project that won't overwhelm you. Sometimes a supply list can be a little bit overwhelming, especially since if this is new to you, then it becomes it becomes a bit of an investment in some of the materials. But there are pretty small, um, you know, resin starter kits. Now, don't get the, the things with the molds and the glitters and the this is and that's is. That's like a lot of extra stuff. OK, so we've just kind of added some some shape to these flowers. We need to still fill in the, the petals. I'm going to rinse that guy a little bit. And I think I'm going to go pink on these other ones. So coming back in here and there may not be a ton of differentiation between the pink and, okay, I got like oh, extra pink there, but I'm just going to kind of do that. Um, I'll just kind of keep doing these. And if you get a little wonky, go for it. Have fun. Again, these are meant to look cartoonish. It's not meant to look realistic. And for this one, I haven't really offered a tracer because at the very beginning, so if you missed it, Linda, and you're interested, um, I did, I went, I did a whole like how to actually draw this guy um, and just sort of broke it down. I went over it pretty quickly, but um, conceptually speaking, they're not terribly difficult to freehand when you just kind of look at the shapes. All right, so now I'm gonna mix like a light pink and just kind of come in and fill in some of these petals. And I'm trying to keep that light pink lighter than the outline and just kind of fill in See if I can cover up some of the um, some of the, the the stems that are drawn through there. So, anyways, yeah, the resin and glass project should be should be super fun. And my hope is that it, it's it becomes a technique that you kind of go, oh, hey, I like that, and you can start experimenting on your own. I know I've got like. I'm like, oh, wait, but Wendy, you're a painter, but there's like all these things I want to do. My brain is all ADHD. It's like, oh, and we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. And I posted and one of my Facebook friends slash Instagram friends actually connected with her on Instagram and she's super cool. She's like, oh, yeah, look at this resin and glass table I did. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so awesome. She used sea glass. She's down in Florida. That's you, Susie. All right, so I just want to fill in these in. Again, it looks kind of goofy and ridiculous, but I think it works for the most part. So I'm going to go even lighter and get a lighter pink kind of white in these here. So it's a very pale pink. And again, you can go as all out wild and crazy with this as you like. I'm just trying to keep it fun, simple, kind of goofy. Seriously, I think we should collage some buttons onto this. I'm all obsessed. Like I went to Michael's the other day and I just like went to town. I was like, oh, can you get this stuff for the resin? We're gonna get this stuff for painting. And so I'm <laughs> just like finding all the stuff that I wanted to do. You guys get like that as well. It's just like, yep, there goes my whole paycheck right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
one more flower down here. So I did five flowers because oftentimes I feel like odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye and the sense of balance or imbalance as we kind of need um, versus even because even tends to be a little bit extra symmetrical. And oftentimes symmetry in, in art can be stiff. And so we're going for kind of, you know, odd numbers are ace. Ah! There you go. I dropped my brush. Ah, my record remains unbroken. Okay, so now we've got our flowers in there. Again, these are super like, you know, nothing special in these flowers. We're just kind of having fun. I'm going to lighten the insides of the, the ones with the darker, the darker outsides. I'm going to lighten the insides a little bit see how this one goes lightning well go inside the cracks inside the inside the knot it works mostly yeah okay so i'm gonna rinse real quick just get some of the extra pink off wipe my own hand and then let's add a couple of little bits and pieces like i feel like we want a little highlight on his on his hat and i'm just doing kind of some quick ooh be careful of that section there. Some quick lines kind of along the edge of his hat. I feel like we need a little differentiation in a few spots. I'm going to redo the highlight there. We're going to leave his, his shoes blue. And we'll just give him like the little highlight there and the highlight there. But I think I want a better edge kind of around his hand and his body and his, his beard. So, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the blue. Again, I'm on. I'm kind of right now. I'm on an like anti-black kick, anti-black paint kick. So I'm gonna just grab some some of this ultramarine blue, a little bit of water to kind of soften it up so it flows better. Oh, all the rest of my colors are dry. I'll add a little bit of the green to it too. All right, so we should be able to kind of get a smooth edge around that nose. I could have used purple to keep it a little bit more skin tony, but I'm good with this kind of funky blue color. All right, so then we, we start partway through his beard. We got to kind of get a good outline on his hand, just real like so. There we are. More emphasis on the outline on this side, less on this side. There's his beard. And then we kind of just get a little bit of outlining around here, but we've got those stems kind of in the front area. See if I can tune an edge here just a bit because the edge is a little funky, but again, that's a very rough surface underneath. So sometimes when you get a really rough surface, it's very hard to get a smooth line. You just do the best you can. But again, we're just having fun, right? And this guy, I wanna, I wanna smush. So here we're kind of at that point where we just get to tune, tune the picture, make it a little bit, you know, nudge it in either direction. I want a little bit more darkness in the bottom of his nose. So I'm gonna attempt to mix a purpley color with a whole bunch of white, a little more pink bring that over here because it's getting intense. A little bit more white. I don't want it to be over the top. All right, there we go. So a little bit of purple. I'm just going to bring that in the lower portion under his nose. Just a little shadow, kind of. Just a little something. Kind of. Maybe a little bit in his, at the bottom of his hand. So I like purple as a shadow or as a way of shading skin tones and some of these other things much better than, than light black. You get little bits of purple in his beard if you want, and then we can come up with some more white and just kind of bring it up a little. So again, initially his beard was mostly kind of a very light blue. I'm now bringing bits of the purple in just because it's kind of what's on my brush, but I'm wanting a little bit more texture in there. I think the purple is kind of a, a nice 
sort of a human color. And it really looks almost more of like a gray as we, as we put this in, which I think is, I find it fascinating when you can take a color and make the brain think it's something else. So I added some darker up there by his nose. I'm just going to come back in over it with a little bit of light, kind of blend it on down. Much easier to kind of blend on surface, at least for me anyways, than it is to mix the perfect color and to keep mixing the perfect color and adding it. So there we go. Now his beard has a little bit more, well, has a little bit more texture. Come on, let's get a little bit extra in there. So on my white surface, I'm now just, or wet surface, I'm just grabbing a little bit, little bits of the dark, kind of bringing it in. Not too much. Oh, I'm sounding very hoarse. And a couple bits of white in between. Oof, apparently mixes a pink in there. Yuck. All right, we are getting very close to me overworking this. I can feel that coming, so I might need to take a break and not kill the, the design. But, you know, so there you go. We kind of have like a, a cute, funny little, funny little guy. Um, I think we could add a little bit more highlight kind of right along the maybe the rim of his, his hat. Yeah, that was missing. And then maybe a little highlight inside some of these flowers kind of on the circle. These lighter white ones may not show, but you could put a couple of dots in the darker, in the darker petals. Um, maybe a couple of dots there, here. That kind of adds a little bit of fun. And then maybe some, we'll grab some of the darker pink and do a little something inside the flower like so. Yeah. Offloading that paint. Grab a little dark blue. Oh gosh, I got a big old watered blot that's gonna like dribble right on my painting. Okay, there we go. I saved it. And if you want, you can add like a couple of little dots of whiskers in here in threes, twos, whatever. It's just a few little spots. Not much, but just a little something that kind of gives him that touch of grizzle. I think we can call it good. If you don't like his blue shoes, you can always add just like a, a smidge of green to that. That was too much smidge of green. But you could work like a little bit of the blue in. That would kind of shift it a little, maybe. Yeah, one time I actually did a, a like, I did a dark blue and it was using this color. And I added some like yellow or red to it and it ended up looking like black it was the coolest thing but you see how we add just a tiny bit of green to it and now it, it this these shoes no longer match that and there was just like a little ball kind of directly under of color right under that highlight okay so i think this guy's good we're gonna we're gonna call it call it a stop on this feel free to continue embellishing you know if you want to bedazzle it and rhinestone it and all those things go for it let me grab the resin project really quick to show you guys All right, so this is this is the one that we're actually going to be doing. I did it on a 9 by 12, but I'm actually going to recommend that we do it on something smaller, like a square. And I literally just painted like a red heart on top of something that I um, did the buffalo plaid on ages ago. And then so you end up with these like those fun little like bead glass you know, vase fillers. And then this is all like the crackle shattered glass vase filler and resin. Um, it, again, it's pretty straightforward. Once you learn how to do this or do it the first time, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that is so stinking easy. I can't believe it. Why didn't I start that sooner? But with this one, and again, there's a lot of options here. This is slightly larger. This took longer, so we'll probably go smaller. But I got some Scrabble tiles. You could also get um, like alphabet beads. These ones are a little harder to see, so I'd probably do the black beads with the white lettering versus the white beads with the silver lettering where it says, I love you. And again, I was feeling very tangerine-y on this, but look at that glitter embedded in there and it's super high shine. So it's really fun. And you know, just like buttons and findings, but look at this, I have some rhinestone. Oh, not on this one, but this one was actually kind of like a, a gem. It loses a lot of its sparkle. 
So if you're grabbing things solely for their sparkle value, you may not be winning there. But this was a matte finish button. And look at it. It's like this gorgeous shine and interestingness. Here's a huge chunk of glass, some gold brassy buttons that I found. You know, the big gems, the, the medium normal gems, and then like the small micro gems. So again, I've got a shopping list all posted. I hope you guys are interested. Again, it's totally free. 7.30 p.m. on Friday, February 4th supply list um, oh look sheet music spatter gold you know most of this is stuff that you've seen me work with before except for this chunk of stuff in the middle anyways i love you guys and we will see you soon i'm gonna call it a day bye